Only God's plan for salvation will work Father, what will you have me do? What will you have me say? And to whom? What is salvation, Father? I do not know Tell me that I may understand Grievances is an attack on your plan Holy Spirit, please help me to understand so that I can do what I can to ensure God's plan. Only God's plan for salvation will work. Father, what will you have me do? What will you have me say? And to What is salvation, Father? I do not know. Tell me that I may understand. Grievance is an attack on your plan. Holy Spirit. Please help me to understand So that I can Do what I can To ensure God's plan Only God's plan for salvation will screen you see we have uh, the conversation the meaning of atonement the meaning of atonement and um, I, and I, as I said prior to be starting teaching today I had a very interesting conversation that influences the direction that I'm going to go uh, we have been talking about identity because I'm convinced that once we have our true identity then a lot of things will fall away from us. Um, because uh, as, I, no, I, this, I have not said it here, so I get to say that. I think Robert and Tony have heard this before, but I get to say this here. The body is neutral. The body does not produce anything. And uh, we, we believe that we have a warfare with our bodies. We believe that our bodies are the proof of being is in its tasting. One of the reasons you know the body has no is neutral. All you have to do is remove you from the body and it's dead. So if the body had its own life, had its own mind, and could produce, it could produce without you. So in its production and whatever it's producing and you're experiencing, it has to do with your power. It has to do it with your cooperation. Because without you cooperating, the body does is neutral, it's not negative, it's not good, it's, it's none of that. Okay? So <clears throat> So what needs healing is not the body, though the body is, is the evidence of sickness. The body has the evidence of pain. The body has the evidence or the effects of uncomfort. Now, we taught uh, on video that um, sickness is one of the defenses against truth. 
Sickness is a defense against truth. In fact, in John uh, chapter, <laughs> let me do this. I didn't know I was going to do this as I did this before. And I found out that, that for you guys, you guys will see, um, uh, you guys will see my notes on the screen. But for the video, uh, the screen is gone. <laughs> the video won't, it doesn't pick that up, but you guys can see it. It's white on the, on the video. Um, in John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, if you're just an average thinking person, you would think, well, I will be free of sickness. I will be free of depression. I would be free of guilt. I'm free. I don't have any negative thing in my life because the truth has made me free. So most of us are not free. So it would be very uh, con conducive to us to find out what truth he's talking about because apparently he's not talking about the truth we think we know. Because we know truth or we think we know truth, and yet we're still bound by something. Okay? So now, now, now this has nothing to do with condemnation. This has nothing to do with nothing other than educating you to get you to understand more about um, uh, the truth. Amen? And the truth deals with your identity. And the problem that we have is from birth, we have been fed lies. So I don't care how old you are, most of your life you've heard a lie about yourself. So you add that with days, hours, minutes, and seconds, it becomes very difficult to unravel what you think you know. That's the challenge is to unravel what you think you know, all right? So one of the challenges that we discussed yesterday as we were talking about identity, the question came up, well, do you believe in, in angels? Do you believe, because I don't believe in spiritual warfare anymore. Do you believe in, uh, uh, well, at least not the way they teach it. I, I got another take on it. Do you believe, and I'm, and I'm trying to help this person get over some challenges that they have by telling them the truth. So they ask me the questions that actually have them in bondage. And so the, do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? And so what we shared with them was it starts, see you starting at the wrong place. All of this starts at the fall. That's where it starts, the so-called fall. Everything else happens after that. All this stuff about casting out demons, casting out the devil, none of that was an issue before the fall. So then the next question was, well, do you, do you not believe that Satan fell and, and he brought a third of heaven with him? I said, I have a conversation on that, but I can't give it to you in 30 minutes. And then they smiled at me because they've heard my teaching on that. So you know, like they go, okay, uh, all right. They came back to this, they go like, okay, I remember. And so they kind of like left that alone because in short, most of all of that is mythology. That's, that's Greek. It has nothing to do with God revealing himself to humanity. And, and, and all that stuff, Enuma Elish and all that kind of stuff, it all, it's all breeded into what we call Christianity, and we're trying to give explanation to what to to our historians' uh, superstition it has nothing to do with your identity. I said, let's talk about your identity. You ain't no angel. Let me deal with it. Let me let me deal with who you are, and the fact that you're the one that don't have no peace. Let's not you know let, let's not sidestep this. Let's 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 stay on course about what we're discussing, about your liberty that you have in Christ, about the success of the cross and how there is no warfare. You know, see, with most people in the, 
the belief Christian thing think they're warring with something. They're warring with their marriage is under attack. Their bodies are under attack. They have a problem with their boss. The devil is in their employer. The next door neighbor's dog is demonized. Uh, <laughs> they, they've got, they got demons and devils everywhere, and this is spiritual warfare. And I asked the man, because he's a preacher, I asked the man, I said to him, if you didn't have an enemy, could you have a message? Because under today, under that, under our brothers and sisters and that sect of our brothers and sisters, they have no message apart from war. They have no good news. By the way, war is not good news. I said, you guys have privately and slyly implied that I'm new age. And I said, well, if I'm new age, so is Jesus. Because he came and upset the old age. Yes. Amen. <laughs> He's against all the old to establish a new. So if, you, if, if I'm new age, then I'm in good company because Jesus is new age. Okay? Now... So there were some questions. <laughs> what about casting out demons? I said, we, all right, I said, you got to go back to the beginning. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> and understand, and, we, and, and I have it here, because... I, I, um, because it was talking about casting out the devil. And, I, and, and information came in, in the Bible and basically in the New Testament. The word translated devil does not mean devil. And it's wrong. There's, there's, there's 119, 117 instances, and it's wrong. It's, the word devil is used incorrectly. There are about 36 places that the word that's, that's used devil could be translated devil, but it's not speaking of what we think is the devil. Y'all, you, you will know this in a minute, okay? Uh, so here we have, in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning uh, than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now here is, this is more interesting. This word cunning, it can be translated as wise. All right? That's, at the beginning, you catch one error. This serpent is presented himself as being wise. He's presented himself as being more wise than Adam and Eve. Now, God has already assured them that they are created in his image and his likeness, and they are the rulers of the earth. Everything is subject to them, and they buy into this serpent as being more wise. That's like some two-year-old coming and telling you that they have wisdom you ought to follow. That's, that's what this is. So, they to listen to the serpent is an error. <laughs> that says a lot. That tells us that we don't know that we have the wisdom of God. And anytime we think we need wisdom from something or someone else, you are being unwise. Okay, now, 
The only thing I'm supposed to do is echo what you already know. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, and, and right, if you take, I see some of you taking notes, write this down. Truth cannot be learned. And that's the whole problem. That's why, we, that's why you got all these Bible schools, you got all these people trying to remember scriptures and all this kind of stuff. Da, 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 da. Truth cannot be learned. Truth can only be recognized and accepted. I'm getting a little ahead of myself when I say this because truth is not a part of this system. The truth that Jesus is talking about is not a part of the system or the system of the senses. Thus, any truth that comes from the system of the senses has nothing in common with God's truth. And God's truth is the only truth that matters because his truth is the only truth that doesn't change. Endless and endless where the senses and this world system has its end. And with this end is the end of its truth. So in essence, it's an illusion. That's why, that, that's why I use certain words. Illusions, fantasies, fabricated. It don't last. Only thing that is real has eternity attached to it. Right? So you are not to take any advice from your body. One more time. Because your body has a voice. And your voice of your body is the Antichrist. Because when you're sick, it's telling you you're not healed. God's word never changes. Don't have no compromise. And his word says you're healed. Amen. You're health. You're well. You're well-being. But your body says, no, I'm sick. And here's the evidence. So the prophet says, well, whose report are you going to believe? You think that's something to do with a preacher or the newspaper. No, that has to do with you. You are giving yourself a report. And you're looking outside of yourself to find out who you are. And see, that's the problem. Most people don't know who they are. And you can't find no young person to know who they are. They're all searching. I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to find myself. I'm trying to find myself. That is ridiculous. You are who God created you to be. I am what who God created me to be. I know myself. That's the, that's why people people are not certain about certain things because they don't know themselves. And if you're not certain of who you are, it. It clouds how you see the world. See, you see the world through lenses of uncertainty. And if you're uncertain about who you are, you're gripped with fear. Amen. You're gripped with fear. <laughs> and one of the translations of the word devil is fear. Fear. So when you're reading your Bible, you go home, you read your Bible, you're in your concourse on devil, wherever it's translated devil, just take that devil out and put the word fear there. And it flows just fine. And as a roaring lion, he's prowling around seeking, talking about the devil, who he may, be, may devour. So who's trying to devour you? Fear. Fear is try trying to devour you. I, you know, I talk to a lot of people who say, you know, God told me I'm this, and God told me I should do that, and God showed me that I will be here, and they're not there. So if you look at all the people that, that when they were young, said that God said to them, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go there, I'm going to be this, and look at how many actually accomplish what they said. God told me is this high, and the people who accomplished it is that small. I believe that everyone can hear the voice of God. And I believe that God told them. So what stopped them 
from being, oh, I went dark. So that's okay. What stopped them from being, back to the movies. <laughs> what stopped them from being uh, what God told them? Fear. Fear is what stopped them. Because if they were what, what God told them to be, they would be doing what God told them to do. But fear made them afraid to move forward. Fear told them, oh, you can't do that. That's, that's that serpentine thought that comes to be wiser than God in your ear. And we tend to listen to the lie before we believe the truth. Why? Because of fear. Fear make you look for somebody else's opinion than to believe God's word. Fear is devouring you. Fear is tormenting you. Amen. Fear makes you think you're in some kind of warfare. Ain't no warfare. So what needs to be healed is your mind. And you need to get rid of the spirit of fear out of your head. What is the greatest fear you could possibly have? It's dying. Death is the greatest fear. Not living long enough to see your children drying up or to see your grandkids or to do this or do that. Fear. Fear, 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 fear. You should say, I am as God created me. I am as God created me. I, I, and I choose to be what God created me or who God created me. I choose that. That's my choice. And watch this. The only place that choice is real is on earth. It's in this body. Because outside of this body, there is no choice. That's why it's crazy to think that there's something in the spirit that's anti-God warring against us. Outside of the body, there is no choice. Nobody is created in the image of God but you. Not a name. Not a You. You are God's child. You are God's child that will never change. And just, just a birth, you got more power than anything made. Because you ain't made, you're born. Come on, talk to me now. You know, like, see, and all this, and, 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 and what gets me is religion. I don't care how well articulated religion is if it talks to you as though you are a servant and a slave, it is actually the spirit of Antichrist. I don't care if it, if it wears a cross. I don't care if it carries a Bible. It is saying Christ did not finish. God is subjected to these bodies. God has no more power than the body. The body can twist you. The body can make you pain. The body can make you cry. And God can't do a thing about it. The body can kill you at will. A heart attack. And what are you going to do? All you got to do is just sit there and take it. And you believe it because the body has you afraid to be who God created you to be for fear of dying. But once you know, I am passing through this hell, because this time is hell. This is not heaven. I'm come to hell to save the people that I can save in my lifetime. That's my purpose of being here, to be savior of the world, to remind people that you are not a body, you are the child of God, you're just passing through on your way back to your father. This is not your permanent home. It is temporary. Don't love it. Don't hold on to it. Don't cherish it because this is not it. It ain't worthy of you. People have fame and notoriety and, and this and that. This all that is fleeting. You know, you know, I grew up and we all grew up. I remember OJ. Amen. He's in the news lately. I remember OJ back at USC. Woo, especially of Oak. We were really charged about OJ. Now, we don't even want to be associated with OJ. Old times has changed. You know, so, so, you know, we build up our idols, and our idols disappoint us. 
we go after dreams and goals, and once we attach them, they're not fulfilling to us because nothing in this system can help us. Amen? Amen. So here we have this story. Let's go back to this. Genesis 3. So verse 2, it says, And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is, is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows. Uh-oh, now he's saying, I know something about you, and God knows something about you that you don't know about you. And they, and he, and they bought into it. He said, <laughs> so, and in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like what? God, knowing good and evil. This is the fall, y'all. If this is where the fall starts, with the knowledge of good and evil, how in the world do you expect to save people by preaching good and evil? If this is in your Bible, you cannot escape it. It really baffles my mind that people will read that and say, oh, this, and, and, and I'm talking about they will help you. They'll say, yeah, this, this, this is where the fall happened, right here in this reaching for the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, that's the fall. So apparently, before they reached for the knowledge of good and evil, there was no knowledge of good and evil. So in the reaching for the knowledge of good and evil, caused them to fall. So how can I preach what caused the fall to help me be saved? How can I preach good and evil, war against evil, Judge what's good, judge what's evil, and be right in God's eyes. This is a system. This is a system. I, I, I told you this a couple of weeks ago. I remind you of this. With Jesus standing before Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate is, is acting as though, okay, do you want to make, give me a defense? These people are, 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 are trying to kill you. And Jesus <laughs> looked at Pontius like, you know, man. You ain't got the power over me. I'm here because I choose to be. I'm kind of paraphrasing. <laughs> That's Will Wheat's in redemption of that scripture. And Jesus went on to say to him, bro, listen, bro. My kingdom, I come from, has nothing in common with the structure I'm sorry, nothing to come with the political or the religious structures of this world. Boom. My kingdom has nothing in common with the political or religious structures of this world. The political and, 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 and religious structures are built on opposition, built on conflict built on war. He says, for if it had or did have these structures, my subordinates would not allow me to be handed over to the Jews. But because I ain't from here, and that's not what governs me, this is happening by my choice. He said it in 10. In John 10, he says, no man, no man takes my life. I'm laying it down freely. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up. I want you to understand, don't, y get, don't you get it twisted. Ain't nobody got no rule over me but my father. And, that, and he came as an example of you. No one has no rule over you. No one has no rule. Paul, Paul did it. Paul, Paul was stoned. Paul was left uh, in, the, in, the, in the cold water for three days and three nights, gets out of the water, get bit by the most poisonous snake there is, and just like he shook off those three days in the deep, he shook off that snake in the fire because he was on purpose. He had a place that he had to go, and nothing can stop him. It, the reason you're a kilt is because you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know who you are. As long as you know who you are and what you're doing, nothing can kill you. That's what I said, I said last week, and I'll say it again. I don't know nobody. 
who said, but Paul, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I don't know whether I ought to live or die. Oh, but death is so much better. But I'll remain. He had his purpose. And when it was over, he knew it. So I'm quick. It's over. I finished. I kept the faith. I finished my race. I finished my race. And I'm ready. I'm ready. See, see, you got to know what you're here for. And you should not die until you are ready. No, no diabetes, no strokes, no uh, wayward bullets, not shot by the policeman, no car accident, the plane don't, don't fall and drop and you die. None of that can happen. The reason Paul, Paul and on the boat, he says, he said, you know, they were tossed, they throwing stuff out. And he, he said, man, be of good courage. Because I'm on this boat. I'm here. Ain't nobody going to lose their life. You got to understand, you are where you are, and because you are there, it's safe. Because if you wasn't there, it would be all chaotic because you know who you are. You know your anointing. You know your ability. You know your assignment. And everybody assigned to you is safe. My wife and I was talking about the other day. That's why certain people attached to me will have certain problems because they, re they receive it. Oh. Thank you. They receive it. They, they rece I'm safe. I'm covered. That's yeah. the best place to be is covered. I'm in the yeah. will of God. Yeah. Amen. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I honor where God has placed me. I'm safe. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So you need to know that you are safe. No fear come and rob you and steal you from your safe place. Amen. Amen. The word is coming and washing you and cleansing you from all things. You just accept that word. God, man, just bathe me, Pastor. Do your job. Like, 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 be said, not just my hands, but my feet, my whole body. <laughs> Jesus said, no, man, you're already clean. I don't need to do all of that. But that, that's the idea. You got to understand what the word does for you. And, and Satan will pull you from your safe place. Not every place is your place. Not every lesson is the lesson you should hear for the work you should do, for the witness you should have. They all have its place. But it's not for everybody. Are y'all listening? God assigned you. Just like you assigned to me, I'm assigned to you. I can't go run around and just pick anybody I want. Amen. Just because they look good, sound good, and got the money. Praise God. I got to stick with who God gave me and be happy about it. And I am. By the way, don't think I'm not. I'm happy about it. Amen. So, so this the system. It's this world system. And when, when you see Jesus casting out Demons, he's not casting out demons. He's snatching souls out of the system. But he's laying hands on the sick. He ain't rebuking sickness. He's snatching the soul out of the system and reconnected them to the eternal habitation of wellness. Jesus looked at the par paralytic and he said to him, your sins are forgiven. And those Pharisees and scribes can forgive sins, yeah. but God, who is he? Ain't nobody can forgive no sins, but God. And he looked, and he knowing their thoughts, he said, well, what's easier to say? Mind you, he ain't died yet. He ain't went to hell yet. He hasn't risen from the dead yet. But he saw that man as he was. Without sin. Because he is as he was created, sinless. Uh, I got some more, but I'm out of time. I got some more scriptures for you guys. So hopefully I'll pick this up next week, but I'm out of time. Uh, this, this, and it's right there. You know, like Jesus says, well, some of y'all used to be hoes and prostitutes and homosexuals and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. You know, you used to be that. 
I'll paraphrase again, but you've been washed. And then in Colossians chapter 2, it says, and he, and he took the handwriting, the law, that was against all of us, and he nailed it up on the cross. He's taken the law out the way. That is the law. It says, all things are lawful for me because there is no law against me. I can do whatever I want. Because Jesus' work was that good. Uh, stumble. You mean that I can go sin and do whatever I want to do? You mean I can do whatever I want to do and still die and go to heaven? Yes. I do that. I do mean that. But if you have your identity correct, you wouldn't want to do those things unless your identity was flawed. You would have to be insane to go against yourself. Because all you were doing is sinning against who you are. And all God would say, oh, my poor child is out of their mind. I can't hold it against because they're crazy. Because madness has gripped their reality. He ain't going to judge you for being crazy. Because you're still, he created you. Holy, you're created after his image and his likeness. If he's holy, then so are you. Amen. If he's perfect, so are you. Is, is he sinless? So are you. You just caught in insanity, punishing yourself for not being what you are, trying to be holy and you're already holy, and punish yourself with sickness and punish yourself with heart attack, punish yourself with cancer. Every time you go, ugh, you, 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 you're causing that pain to go in and come out as some kind of fruit in your life. And the best healing is to realize and concentrate and meditate on your wholeness, your oneness with God. Yes. I live until I'm tired. I don't care what the doctors say. No death can take my life until I am finished with it. I am not afraid of dying because the worst that can happen to me is I wake up in glory. It's like moving from one room to another. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. I'm eternal. The body is not, but I am. Amen. We praise God. I, 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 I had my, my 30 minutes a long time ago. So we just want to encourage those who are watching that God has plans for your life. And none of those plans include the theme. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week's Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. nccfc.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC. NCCFC. NCCFC.